welcome to episode 13 of this 1977 GS750 restoration. Hope you're enjoying the series uh, and learning something like I am. Um, if you are, um, click like or maybe even subscribe to see how the project's going. Uh, in this episode, we'll uh, get the frame up on its wheels and uh, start having a look at some of the uh, front and back suspension and uh, then uh, move on from there. So uh, let's get on with it. These arrived this morning, um, which are my replacement shocks for the GS. Um, look pretty good. Uh, they're slightly longer than the original, about 15 millimeters, which I don't think will be a huge problem. Um, the only issue is obviously this um, chrome cover here, which I'm going to attempt to remove because um, I want it to look, you know, as close to the original as possible. So the next step is to try and come up with some jig to uh, compress those springs, similar to what I did with the original ones, and uh, see if we can get that chrome cover off. So this is my setup to try and get these chrome covers off. Um, so screwdriver through the bottom, spaced out so that the uh, turnbuckles don't hit the spring. Uh, some gaffer tape around the chrome cover and then the hooks uh, uh, screwed on there with a uh, big hose clamp. So hopefully I can screw these down, pull that down far enough to undo however this goes on and then hopefully get that chrome cover off nut there so hopefully I can get that uh, end off and then take this cover off and hopefully what's underneath looks okay hmm so I managed to get that off unfortunately what's underneath is not ideal um, basically there's this plastic piece that just sits up underneath that uh, chrome cover uh, and then this goes on the top. Now, pull that out, which is fine, which looks starting to look similar to there. But that diameter of that piece is a little bit small, so I may need to come up with some sort of washer to go underneath that. Thought about maybe just cutting the top few millimetres of that that off just cutting this top section off using that but um, let's see if I can get a very large washer to do something similar spray it silver and see what that looks like so this is what I ended up doing basically cutting off most of that little cover and trimming up the edges needed to be back on there so that the spring would fit nicely. Um, I also trimmed a little plastic bit inside there so um, yeah reasonably happy with that. Um, looks pretty close to the original and uh, nice and new and shiny so that's good. So the forks were uh, in good condition so I've literally just given them a bit of a clean up um, and a bit of a, uh, bit of a polish on the buffing machine. So I think they've turned out okay. I haven't put any clear coat on there, but I'll just see how they go. If they need a clear coat later on, I can easily take them off and do them again. But um, yeah, looking good. So the next thing I'm concentrating on is the rear wheel. Get that back on the bike, um, getting it stood up. Um, so I've taken uh, most of it apart. Um, the actual tyre that came with it was it's in pretty good nick. It might be a bit old, but I'm going to put it back on and see how it goes. Um, certainly plenty of tread there, but uh, it might be a few years old. But um, anyway, we'll see what happens with that. Um, so yes, I've cleaned things up, um, given the disc a bit of a sand and uh, and, and a paint. Um, see how the brakes work on that. Um, the rear sprocket, sprockets are actually in good condition and the chain as well. Cleaned up some other bits, painted some other bits. 
Um, now the reason I took the tire off is because there was actually a missing spoke in this wheel so that was a bit of a problem trying to find a single spoke um, looking at various spoke kits and I didn't really want to change all of the spokes because then I'd have to change the front one as well otherwise it'd look a bit weird but I eventually found um, with the help of some people online this uh, Ashes Spoked Wheels in Brisbane Australia and um, they actually made me uh, a spoke because I had the specification so you can see that uh, shiny one there is a brand new spoke and it was like uh, including the spoke and shipping was less than twenty dollars so I'm very happy with that that arrived on Friday so uh, yeah just uh, giving this sort of a bit of a polish gonna clean it up try and clean the spokes and maybe give them a coat of clear to um, stop them corroding and then uh, put the tire back on and the back wheel on and then uh, move on to the front wheel so finally got the tire back on First time I managed to pinch the tube, so I repaired that and then carefully put it back on. A bit of a nightmare because it's a fairly old tyre, so it's a bit stiff. But uh, anyway, it's back on, um, and I've made this um, wheel balancing jig here just out of some timber. Um, I went and bought some um, some wheel nuts, just generic wheel nuts, uh, since they've got the tapered point on them and then put them on a bit of 3 8 uh, rod and then tighten them onto the bearings and that gives it a nice uh, smooth uh, axle to rotate on so you just rotate that round until um, you find where the heavy spot is and then start putting on wheel weights now this wheel did have a couple of wheel weights on it before but they fell off so I've got some new ones coming uh, so yeah it's just a matter of rotating that until you find where the heavy spot is putting the weights on until it sort of balances and doesn't tend to fall into one spot so um, hopefully um, some of those deliveries including those wheel weights will be arriving soon so I've now managed to put the center stand and the side stand on and uh, connect up those springs which is uh, a bit difficult, but um, I came up with a method for doing that. And um, also tidied up the front wheel, gave it a bit of a paint job around the uh, disc and uh, gave it a clean. And so the front wheel is now on. So it's now sitting on its centre stand. Uh, put the handlebars on temporarily just to um, help me move it around. So um, yeah, come along nicely. So now that it's up on the wheels, I can concentrate on uh, some of the other bits and pieces. Uh, so what have I done? Um, uh, put the battery box back together and bolted that back in with some uh, some new stainless steel uh, screws and, uh, and large washers. Um, foot pegs, I've restored those, give them a you know, sandblast and a paint. And as I said in earlier episodes, the rubbers are are very good so uh, they don't need replacing um, just got them screwed on at the moment not tightly I think this one has to come off to get that side cover back on um, put the starter motor back in um, and uh, that was uh, replace the o-ring on that as well um, what else have I done um, uh, put the instruments on uh, you saw earlier episodes where I did the restoration of that so that's looking quite nice um, and the uh, the headlight, the uh, plastic casing around the headlight had been repaired previously, a reasonable sort of job, but did need a bit of tidying up. So I um, did a bit of sanding and more gluing, etc., uh, around that, fixed that up, and then uh, you know cleaned all the um, the lights and uh, the chrome frames and things, and put that back on. Obviously the wiring harness isn't in there just yet, but um, that's coming. Um, so yeah, starting to uh, starting to look like a bike, which is uh, which is great. So that's it for episode 13 of this GS750 restoration. Hope you're enjoying the series. Uh, click like if you are, or maybe even subscribe. Uh, making some really good progress now. 
Um, the uh, COVID-19 shutdown is having a bit of an, an issue with getting parts, but um, rather than going to the stores, I'm ordering online and that seems to be working quite well with some fairly quick deliveries, although there is an exhaust system coming from Italy, which yeah, I'm not expecting to see for any number of months. But uh, yes, as I say, hope you're enjoying the progress. Um, really starting to look like a bike now, and uh, yeah, it's getting uh, getting to the uh, the fun end of the project. So um, uh, see you in episode fourteen.